Old X. Introspections upon Perfection and Extract from My Time Amongst the Eldar. Codex Eldar, 3rd Edition, written by Gavin Thorpe, with additional text by Andy Chambers, Jervis Johnson, and Tuomas Perinin. Page 43. Narrated by R.J. Bailey. Introspections upon Perfection by Kaiser Duras the Anchorite In the spring storms of our youth, it is common amongst our people to question the validity and, indeed, sanity of our ways, most especially in the pursuit of perfection in but one field of endeavour at a time. The path as it has been called since our ancestors created it. While the young are intellectually capable of studying the tragic lessons of the fall and the great enemy unleashed by our ancestors, their view of the universe is too narrow to truly see the lessons intrinsic in the terrible events which destroyed our home worlds and drove forth the survivors to wander the stars. It is true of all that in youth there is great bravery and great foolishness in equal measure, an abiding belief that no obstacle is too great to overcome, no foe too mighty to defeat, no problem so complex that it cannot be solved. Conversely, it may be said that those who survive the galaxy's tumult for long enough come to believe that all obstacles, foes, and problems may not be resolved, only allayed for a brief sliver of history, which, in turn, is but an instant in the slow dance of the universe. Thus, it is that young and old clash incessantly over the necessity of the path. The young rail against the restrictions it imposes upon them, much as our doomed forebears did. They wish to taste every sensation, every emotion within their new-found world as soon as possible. They do not fear the great enemy that was created by the desires of our ancestors, for their whole conception of her evil is gleaned from distant tales and legends, and that which brought fear in the nursery is spurned and ridiculed in adolescence. Only with time can they begin to feel the terrible thirst which we gave her, and begin to understand that she is a mirror image, a reflection of our worst excesses given life by the debauchery and depravity which preceded the fall. Long ago, our race realized that the only way to elude the great enemy was to shatter the reflection, to live a life of denial and focus upon but one aspect of life, pursuing it unto perfection. This is anathema to the young, just as it is to the great enemy. The young do not desire the discipline of the path, but rather their curiosity drives them to try every fruit from the tree. Thus it is that so many take the path of wandering or the path of damnation in their first years of adulthood. And so the great tragedy of our kind is played out again and again as the number of our people shrink from generation to generation. Of all the things I learned during my sojourn upon that vast and aptly named craft world, none was more horrifying than the secret of the infinity circuit, 
a poor translation of the Eldar term for the device, but one which must suffice. I had been amongst these strange alien creatures for some months, and was slowly learning something of their customs. The Eldar are an enigmatic race, who will rarely give a direct answer to a direct question. To learn anything of their ways, I was forced to slowly piece together information from observation and careful consideration of the truth hidden in the largely allegorical answers my guide and host would deign to give me. So it was that I had for some time been trying to fathom the Eldar's attitude to that which must needs come to us all, namely, the restful sleep of death. Of all my questions, it was those upon this subject which my host seemed the most reluctant to answer. All intelligent creatures must struggle to come to terms with their own mortality, and I know of no one who has not had to conquer his fear of dying at some time. Even the bravest of warriors must overcome this fear. Indeed, it is by such confrontation that they prove themselves truly brave. Yet, for such an aloof and seemingly wise race, the Eldar appear to have a fear of dying which exceeds that of any people I have ever met. Yet slowly I was able to piece together the truth, and came to understand why the Eldar view death with such horror, and how they avoid it through the medium of the Infinity Circuit. It is common knowledge that each Eldar bears upon his breast a highly polished gemstone, some consider these an affection or merely decorative bauble. Nothing could be further from the truth. These devices, whose name best translates as spirit stones, are actually psychoreceptive crystals attuned solely to the mind of their owner, and which are designed to capture the very souls of the Eldar at the moment of death. Why exactly the Eldar should go to such lengths to capture this psychic energy, I was never able to find out. All I could ascertain was that the Eldar appear to have a belief that should their soul not be captured in this way, then it would be lost to a strange shadow realm, where it would, quite literally, suffer a fate worse than death. What fate could be worse than the half-death of imprisonment in the cold crystal of a spirit stone is hard to imagine, yet the fact remains that the Eldar prefer an infinity trapped in this way, and that the alternative is looked upon with a dread unmatched by any I have ever seen. But enough pointless hypothesising. The fact is that at death the soul of an Eldar is captured by the spirit stone he wears on his breast. The majority of such inhabited spirit stones are taken to a place known as the Dome of the Crystal Seers, or at least such was the case in the craft world upon which I resided, and I have no reason to doubt that it is the same elsewhere. However, they rest and, one hopes, find some sort of peace. Sometimes, however, a spirit stone is grafted to the robotic body of a wraith guard or Eldar dreadnought, imbuing its artificial form with a living intellect. The horror of such a fate is difficult to imagine, dooming the recipient, as it does, to an eternal shadow life trapped in a shell of cold, unfeeling steel. These spirit warriors defend their craft world and are much revered by their mortal counterparts. Yet I cannot help but think that such honour is little reward for so great a sacrifice. Extract from My Time Amongst the Eldar or How I Visited Ayandan Craft World and Lived by Ielda Soekra You have been listening to Introspections Upon Perfection and Extract from My Time Amongst the Eldar Page 43 Codex Eldar 3rd Edition Written by Gavin Thorpe With additional text by Andy Chambers, Jervis Johnson and Tuomas Perinin Narrated by R.J. Bailey Thank you to Gav Thorpe, Andy Chambers, Jervis Johnson and Tuomas Perenin for writing the fiction I grew up with. Additional thanks to Tuomas for helping me pronounce his name correctly.
or as near to it as we were able to get. If you've enjoyed this, please leave a review where you found it, or like, share and subscribe on YouTube, depending how you're listening. This production, like all of Old X, is entirely unofficial and uncommercial, from an out-of-print publication, is a derivative work with all copyrights owned by Games Workshop, and is a celebration of the hobby and lore I grew up with. If you have any suggestions for other old Codex fiction for me to narrate on this podcast, you can comment, contact me on Twitter at rjbailey, or email robertjbailey at gmail.com. Links are in the show description.